Hello everyone, this is kind of a last minute live. I'm popping on because we are going to be talking all about Mod Podge. This is a secret potion for making money easy. Um, and if you've been following along my channel here for a while, you know I love this darn stuff. It can do so many things in your craft room um, that if you haven't tried it, you need to. But today we're gonna focus on making money with Mod Podge because we have the upcoming um, holiday seasons. We got Halloween, we got fall, we got Christmas. And if you, any of my followers, which I know there's a lot of you, are, um, if you are a reseller and you've got markets coming up or craft sales or you're selling on a tw marketplace, um, this is a great technique to make some DIYs that you can flip and sell. And I have focused a lot of this uh, technique on my channel um, because it's fantastic and it's so easy to do and you don't have to spend a lot of money, which means when you're making these products, um, you don't have a lot of co a ri initial cost. So you have more money that you put in your pocket after you make these. So I really wanted to focus on this today and answer your questions because when I go into my um, DMs on Instagram and Facebook or I am, uh, have, can you guys see this okay? When I am, uh, this is kind of going sideways here. Maybe we want this to go this way. Just one sec. I don't know, we're not gonna fool around with it. We're gonna leave it this way. I think you guys can see okay. Um, yeah, so we are going to uh, be doing some DIYs with some scrap wood. These are all really good sellers and so easy to do. Now, I lost track of how, what I was talking about. My DMs, I get lots of DMs in my Facebook, in my Instagram, on my comments on YouTube about this technique and I always say if you can send me pictures then I can probably tell you where you're going wrong what's happening and guide you along this morning and the reason that I'm doing this video right now is because this morning alone I had four people slide into my DMs on Instagram send me pictures of issues that they were having with this technique I was able to help all of them they figured out what they were going doing wrong and I sent them on their way to practice again and then send me some more pictures after and let me know how they made out. So this is a really great way. If you are having issues, pop into the comments and uh, ask away and I can guide you along. And while we're doing that, I am going to make some and finish some up so you can see me doing this in real time. Know that it's really easy to do and um, and, and see any tips or tips or trip tips or tricks that I'm doing that might help you along the way. And I see already you guys are already flying into the comment section and letting me know where you're watching from. I love this because uh, I have people that pop in here from all over the world and it's fantastic. We've got right now we got Texas and Germany and Minnesota and Wisconsin, Kansas, Massachusetts. It's just amazing. It always blows my mind. So if you're just coming on here, um, pop in the comments, let me know where you're watching from. So Mod Podge Matte. You can use a gloss, but you're gonna have a glossy finish when you're done. Um, I like using the matte and then I can decide if I wanna have it glossy or not. And then I can put like a glossy polyacrylic sealer on top or the Mod Podge gloss on top. But I like to start with the matte. And I just have, I'm working right now on some slats from Shutters. I did this in my live last week too, some of these. And uh, I'm just gonna finish them up today. But, so this is a shutter slat. I've put a coat of my homemade chalk paint. This is key. If you're doing this technique and you wanna have really good success, make sure you're using a base of chalk paint. One of my comments this morning, um, they were using acrylic paint. Acrylic paint can work, but if you're just starting off, it's a little bit tricky until you get the technique down pat. So starting off, use some chalk paint and that will help you uh, start doing the transfer properly. You, other, the next step, you don't need very much Mod Podge at all. 
You can, um, I'm putting it on the wood here. You can also put it on the graphic. I tend to put it on the graphic before I put it on the wood. Um, and then you can see, I hardly put any on at all. Flip it around and then put it on your project. I am using regular computer paper, cheap, cheap computer paper. So that's another question that I got this morning. Um, the, she sent me a picture and I knew right away, as soon as I saw the picture, she was using really high quality paper to do this technique. First problem is you have all that paper now because it's so thick to rub off. You don't need that thick paper. You need just the cheapest paper. I buy the Amazon basic computer paper, the cheapest you can get, and it works the best. As soon as you start buying a really expensive computer paper, you're gonna have difficulty. You're gonna have to really rub at it. And next thing you know, you're gonna be rubbing that graphic off. So that's another trick. Do not use thick paper. Um, you can hold the products you use clearly in front of the camera. Yes, I sure will. So this is the first product we're using is the Mod Podge Matte. I tried doing your chalk black paint recipe and it turned gray. It was a latex paint, help. Okay, so um, I find if you're making a colored chalk paint, um, it, it will be lighter than the original color. Probably what you wanna do then if you're finding that it's going too gray is cut back on your plaster of Paris a little bit because the plaster of Paris is white, which makes sense when you're making chalk paint it's going to add that white color into your original paint color. So maybe cut back on the Plaster of Paris a little bit and see if that helps with your black chalk paint recipe and not lightening it up too much. That is uh, one tip that I can give you. Okay, so we've now put these on. You need to set these aside. Don't. So the one that we just finished, this one here, we're gonna set this aside. We're not even gonna think about it for 24 hours. It's done. It's over there. These ones, actually, these ones have been sitting since I did my last live. So that was over a week ago. You don't have to do these right away. You can let them sit and um, do them the next day, the next week, the next month. It doesn't matter whenever you get at it. Got a little dish of water, a little tiny rag. This is off like a, it's just a little piece of a sweatshirt from a rag that we had. Uh, lightly damp, and we are just going to just wet that paper until the graphic shows through. And maybe speak a lot slower, no English. Okay, um, yeah, I can do that. And I like to start in the um, middle and just work in a circular section and you can see that paper is rubbing right off. Now, if your English is not your first language, you can always turn captions on and then you can uh, follow along easier. That you can do in your settings on your video and that will um, maybe help you out, uh, Marina. And you can see, I'm not rubbed, I haven't rubbed very hard and I already, in the middle here, I'll just do one section right here. That's finished. There's no more paper on that middle piece right there. I can feel with my fingers, it's rubbed off. Uh, and that's how easy it is to do this. Now, these were printed on my laser printer, which will make a difference. Uh, it is so much easier to do this technique with a laser printer. It doesn't mean you can't do it. You can use a laser or you can use an inkjet printer. It's just going to be a little bit more tricky. You're gonna have to go a little bit slower and you're going to have to um, not put as much water on. It can be done. If it, it just takes practice. But if you're going to be doing a lot of these and you wanna be a reseller, invest in a laser printer. I'm telling you, your production time will be cut in more than half by using a laser printer than trying to struggle with an inkjet printer. And they're not that expensive anymore. They've really come down in price. And this one, as you can see, real time. That one's done already. And it's ready to be sealed up with a uh, polyacrylic sealer. That's what, I that's what I tend to like 
to use as a, as a top coat is that polyacrylic sealer. Or you can also use uh, the matte Rust-Oleum. There's lots of different companies. They all are fantastic. Uh, the matte clear spray, take it outside or if you have a shed outside and you can just spray these with a top coat or you can buy the polyacrylic in the can and paint it on. As you're asking questions, I'll try to answer them as they come in. I have a laser printer. Where do you get your graphics? I make all of these graphics and I have an Etsy store and every one of these graphics are listed in my Etsy store. Um, all kinds of them and they all are good sellers. I'm not adding anything in my Etsy store that I know is not going to be a good seller or something that you're going to enjoy and having in your home. So the link down below in the description, you're going to find the, the link to my Etsy store. Now there's a couple things for all of these graphics. Um, there's, you can join my channel here on YouTube. And when you join, you're going to get a 50% off coupon for my Etsy store. Or you can join my graphics club, which this is, my graphics club is something, it's new. I've had it for three or four months now. Uh, and it's been overwhelming the support we've had over on our graphic club. Um, the way that it works, it's based on Patreon. So you're going to sign up for a monthly membership and you are going to be sent every graphic that I add brand new into my Etsy store to your inbox every Friday night. And, um, and you can craft with them. Guaranteed to get at least 20 graphics a month. I have not had a month where I have done only 20 graphics. I think last month we did 25. The month before that, I think we almost did 30. So it's a really affordable way to get graphics that you can use for your crafting. And like I said, they're all going to be uh, really good sellers that you can use. And also on Patreon, you're not only gonna get your graphics every uh, Friday, you're also gonna get a discount code for 70% off any of my previous graphics. And I have bundles in there and all kinds of all kinds of great goodies. So that's two options for you if you want to get some graphics and craft with if you are not handy. I mean, you can always make your own graphics if you're handy and you have a little bit of graphic design background. Um, but if you don't have the time and you just wanna craft right away, then that's a great option to buy those graphics uh, either in the Etsy store or become a Patreon member. So there's your answer to that. Um, thanks. I did notice when I opened the gallon of paint, it wasn't mixing properly. It looked a bit oily. Is that normal? Hmm. I'm not sure, Tammy. I would have to have it send me a picture and it almost sounds like maybe it got frozen because sometimes it will do that if it's been frozen. Can you use a Cricut? 100% you can use a Cricut. Uh, and if you're buying graphics out of my Etsy store, one of the files um, will be an SVG. So you can cut them on a Cricut and use it that way. But the thing about a Cricut, and if you're, it's fine if you're not reselling, but if you're a reseller, I find vinyl's expensive. So that's just an extra cost that goes into your little project uh, and it's taking away from your profit. So I have used my Cricut. I use it in certain applications. I use my Cricut uh, when I'm doing t-shirts or when I am doing like mugs, anything that needs to be dishwasher or washable, I'll use my Cricut. Other than that, I always go back to my trusty Mod Podge because I, for the cost of a roll of vinyl, I can make hundreds of signs with a bottle of Mod Podge. So, but that's just my preference. Can you do it with uh, sewing lettering cover with paper and rub off? with sewing letter. I'm not quite sure what you mean, Nikki. Maybe you can explain a little bit more. Um, yeah, thank you. Make sure you hit the like button and let me know where you're watching from. I really appreciate all the support. And we've got Oceanside California in here. Your projects are amazing. Thank you, Regina. And we're just gonna work away on some of these. Ask your questions. And I mean, it, they can also be questions with uh, concerning like decoupaging, um, transfers, paint recipes. Uh, I have all kinds of paint recipes that I ha have in my um, library on my channel. If you're having any issues with anything, then just ask away. So, but you can see how easy this is rubbing off. It doesn't take very long at all. And another question that I got asked 
I get asked a lot, how do you price your DIYs once you've made them? Um, so these little hang tags, I have one here that's finished. So here's one that's finished. I've added some twine, a little um, bead. There's one. Here's another bigger one that I did. And I have a formula of how I pr um, price these. I grabbed it here. I have a formula and it's the, the whole booklet is uh, listed in my Etsy store if you want to grab it. Now all of these will be down in the description afterwards. I'll put all the links to them or you can go to my Etsy store. But this is the whole formula for how I price my DIYs. This is going to give you your retail and your wholesale cost and uh, it works for me. Now if you're doing really big pieces and it's taking you hours and hours this formula is probably not going to work, but if you're just doing small DIYs like this, this is a pretty good guideline to get you started. And you can see here, I've got, it breaks down everything, gives you your wholesale, your retail, and what you should sell your product for. Great little resource, great little booklet. Uh, my daughter and I spent a lot of time putting this together. So um, if that will work for you and, and guide you along, you wanna grab that. And again, if you are a channel member, use your 50% off, or if you're a Patreon member, use your 70% off coupon for that booklet. Uh, what can you use for these? Sorry, came in late and a new subscriber. Um, these are just to, to sell. These are like little uh, Christmas ornaments. I have people that buy them and they hang them on their little rear view mirrors and their cars, gift tags. You can use these for all kinds of um, different ideas. And these are just slats out of an old shutter that was broken that I transformed. So I let, let's do these a little bit more. I have an actual sign that I've done and we'll work on that next. Um, can you give me again some ideas on how to get scrap wood for these projects? Well, that was actually what I was going to talk about next because this is a scrap piece of pallet wood free. I got, I, you can always find pallets. Um, this one was at a building beside us and they were, it was just on the side of the road to get rid of. And I dragged it to my shed, cut it up into all these pieces and had all of this wood for signs. Sometimes pallets can be a little bit rough, so you wanna give them a really good sanding before you paint them, but they work perfect for signs. So other places that I get free wood. Um, I get free wood at the wood pile at the dump. I ask all of my friends, all of my neighbors, all of my family to save any scrap wood. Um, I'll take anything, because I can cut it up on my chop saw into the size that I need, and I can make signs. If you go to your local hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, Home Hardware, a lot of times they will have a scrap wood bin at the back where they cut all of their wood and it's free to give away. I know our Home Depot has a big bin and you can just grab any of those little pieces for yourself. They're all free and bring them home and turn them into your DIY projects or crafts. My main source of wood is, um, from friends and family and I'll take anything and I'll take it if I if I have a dresser that's given to me and it's just really in bad shape and it's too it's not savable um it doesn't go back to the dump I dismantle that dresser because you can just imagine how many projects you can get out of a dresser and turn into something else or turn into big signs the drawers everything so I don't when somebody offers me something um I just put on my thinking cap and take it apart if it's not savable and turn it into other pieces or other projects. Hope that helps. Um, wine bottles, gift tag. Yes, wine and bottle tags, gift tags, exactly. Sorry, my sewing machine, a fancy one that does lettering designs. I can do them on dissolvable paper and uh, that is something, Nikki, I ha I don't know. I'm not sure about that because I've never tried any of that. So if there's anybody here that knows the answer to that, pop in and help Nikki out. I made your paint and took a piece of pallet wood and made a sign of yesterday. I'm so fun. I'm hooked. Seriously. I mean, this is addictive. Um, uh, once I really, okay, I just want to show you this while I'm talking. See how I had a little rough spot in the wood 
and I rubbed the graphite off. That's normal. That's 100% gonna happen if you have rough wood. And this technique is never ever perfect. You're always gonna have little flaws here and there. So I just wanted to show you that while we're in the moment because this transfer project is not perfect. Um, yes, I never look at this, a scrap piece of wood the same anymore. I look at one and I'm like, ah, oh, what can I turn it into? What graphic can I make on this? And um, it's so much fun. And if you can turn it into a little side business with just a Mod Podge and scrap wood, hey, that's fantastic. If you can even make enough money to pay your cell phone bill, I think it's that's fantastic. Seen all your videos instructions. I've tried everything you taught, no luck. I have to find another method. Well, um, have you sent, I, I know I've actually seen you in my messages. M send me some pictures again, because maybe I can guide you along. I'm kind, I think you said you had gone to um, Staples and had some prints done there and they didn't work either. So I'm kind of wondering what's happening there with your uh, technique. So send me some more detailed pictures and I can probably guide you along. And we got Connie from Missouri in here. So this is just a free piece of pallet wood. And from a pallet, when I cut them into this size for signs, I think I end up with, uh, oh my gosh, I think almost maybe 20 signs out of one pallet. So that's a lot of wood. Um, I believe you just need a different glue if it's going to be 3D, but I bet it would work. Okay, there's... But the flaws make it more unique. I love crafting. Yes, they do. The flaw... I, that's what, another reason why I love this technique is because um, it, it's not going to look like a sign that you're going to buy at Hobby Lobby or Target. This is going to look unique. It's going to be one of a kind. You can do the same graphic on six different projects and not one of them are going to look the same. They're all going to look different and have its own unique look. And that's what I like about this. And that's, I think what makes them such a, a good seller too, is because um, it, it isn't going to look like everybody else's. And that's a kind of the problem that I have with using a Cricut to make signs is they all look the same. Um, they're perf They're so perfect looking and that's fantastic if that's the look that you're going for, but I don't know. I kind of lean towards that rustic look and, um, that's why I love this technique so much. Hello from Texas, Kathy, and we've got Arizona in here, Arkansas, first time watching a live. Hi, Sheila. Welcome. And any crafting questions, ask away and I can guide you along. Um, another thing that we can talk about is um, if you are getting ready to do sales around the fall and Christmas uh, time, I have an ultimate craft show checklist. Everything that you will need to um, take to your craft show so you don't forget anything, be really well prepared, is all in this checklist. Again, my daughter and I went through and put all this together. We spent hours and hours putting these booklets together uh, to help you guys out. And they're available in my Etsy store. And uh, this has everything that you're going to need. It's got a customer email list, which is so important. If you are having a craft sale, you wanna gather those emails so you can reach out to them after the sale if they can be a potential um, a client later on. We got some receipts in there. We've got our sales tracker so you can write down all of the sales that you made that day and an order form if somebody wants a custom order. I even put that in this little booklet. So that's something that's really handy if you're interested in also. I have tons of scrap wood from when my mom redid her porch. I've been looking at several videos, have some great ideas, yes. So many great ideas. And, and I mean, these, this technique is not just limited to doing on a piece of wood because I will show you, we'll just finish this right here, or I can do this in a second, because you can do this technique on glass bottles, glass jars. This is the exact same technique. Now, there is a, a specific way to paint glass so it doesn't peel and chip. 
Um, I've perfected a technique so when you're painting glass, it's not gonna budge and I have a video on that. I'll link that down below. So you're going to paint your glass and then you're going to do this exact same transfer method on these glass jars. Best part about this, this was free out of my recycling bin. We all have glass jars. Uh, so you don't have to worry if you can't get your hand on any wood, then look for glass jars. I think this was a um, salsa jar and uh, I haven't sealed this up yet. This needs to be sealed with some polyacrylic sealer. I'll put a nice little bit of twine on here. Really great uh, seller during the holidays and you can do your fall theme or your Halloween theme or your Christmas theme on these glass jars. Here's another, this was a barbecue sauce and I've just put a nice little graphic on it too. Again, I haven't finished this off, but I'll put on uh, some polyacrylic sealer, seal it up really well, put some nice twine in it. You can put some flowers, you can keep the lid and you can use it as a little storage container. Um, so many ideas. So you're not just limited to using your wood. We got the Netherlands in here. I can always see a line after I rub off the paper. Is there something that I can put on there after to make it not so obvious? Okay, so the reason that is happening mainly is because you're using too much Mod Podge. Mod Podge is thick. You can see when you look in that jar, it's a thick product. So if you're putting all kinds of Mod Podge, this one's almost gone, I need a new one. If you're putting way too much Mod Podge on your paper, and then you're putting on your project, when you're rubbing off that paper, that Mod Podge isn't going anywhere. It's thick. You're gonna see the outline of all of that Mod Podge and it's gonna be raised up. So that probably is what your issue is. You're using too much Mod Podge. You do not need very much at all. If you've made a project and you find that it just, it is just showing, um, you can go in with your paint that you did your background in and you can just touch it up here and there where it looks a little bit obvious and blend it in. But if you're just using a small amount of Mod Podge on your transfer, uh, that's really going to eliminate a lot of that. Now, the other thing is, um, if you are doing a transfer method on anything other than white paint, that's going to be a little bit tricky too. You're going to be able to see that Mod Podge, but I'll show you if you're using white, it's going to blend in better. You can see here that you can't really, he can't really see the outline. It's blending really well into that white paint. But if you're doing a color, you might be able to see the outline. But if you practice and you get really good at it, you can blend it in and it doesn't show at all. So here's one that I did with some this is actually acrylic paint, so this can be done on acrylic paint, but keep in mind, I've done thousands of these and I've got lots of practice. So this is acrylic paint, really light coat of Mod Podge, and you can see no outline at all. So it blends in really well. And here's another one that I did, Be Kind. I love this graphic. This is probably one of my favorite graphics that I've done in the last little bit that's available in my Etsy store. I love this one, Be Kind. But again, you can see there's no outline. I've just put a, such a light coat of Mod Podge on there, rubbed off the paper, and it's blended in really well. So there's two examples. Um, yeah, that's probably why. Yeah, so there's your answer. Just cut back a little bit, see how you make out with it. Have your website and shop at Etsy in German. I'll write you here and have you uh, register. Mm, I don't have any in German, no. All, everything is English. I love your videos. Thank you. Is rice paper better to use in printing paper? That's a good question. I have never done the transfer technique with rice paper. So that might be something if there's anybody in the comments that has ever tried the rice paper and had any luck with it, let us know. I have only ever just used the cheap computer paper. First time I tried this process. Uh, just a second, where did it go? Oh, retracted. Okay. Uh, what would be a challenging surface to do this? I want to avoid for beginners. Okay, a challenging surface is anything that's not smooth. This palette wood was actually quite rough, so I really sanded it so I got a smooth surface. If you're trying to do this transfer method 
on anything that's got a lot of texture or a lot of grooves in it, it's gonna be really tricky for you. So you wanna start off with something that's really smooth, like glass or like something like this that's really smooth. There's no grain in the wood or you can see how this is really smooth. That's the best um, to, to do for a beginner project is something that's really smooth. And if it's not super smooth, take your sander over the top before you paint it and that will guide you and help you along a little bit more. Um, rice paper is expensive, probably cheaper just to do it with computer. That's what I was kind of thinking too, rice paper is expensive. Um, so yeah, you might be better just to stick with some computer paper, cheap, cheap computer paper. Does the paint you use have a strong smell? I'm allergic to fumes. Um, I use, I am using my homemade chalk paint. Um, here's another booklet that I put together. I made this one fancy. I've done a little bit of junk journaling with this. Um, but my chalk, all of my chalk paint recipes, all of my paint recipes start with a latex paint. Um, so if you are sensitive to latex, then that might not be a uh, good option for you. But yeah, so all of these, and this booklet again, is it has really uh, good instructions, um, little thing to say what you can use it for, a note section. And this little booklet has chalk paint, chalkboard paint, baking soda, baking powder, coffee grind, texture paste, one step paint, sand paint, sawdust paint, homemade gesso and salt wash paint, but these all have a base of latex paint. So hope that helps you out. And all of these paint recipes, I have full tutorials on my channel too, that you can go back and see what I made with these paint recipes. And uh, that, that was lots of fun too. So here's a really fun sign for a bathroom. Wash your hands. It's very rustic, very primitive. I love that style. Um, and then you would just put a, I would clean it all up a little bit better, sand the back so it looks nicer. I always like to paint the back um, and, and then put a hanger on it. So I'm losing, uh, I got lots of questions coming in here. So hang tight. I have probably grabbed a rough, yes, you don't wanna grab a rough piece of wood. You want something very smooth. Would you talk about the dark painted jars you did in one video? I had a vintage label uh looked terrible um the ones that i did with the dirt and mod podge maybe and then i decoupaged on i don't have any examples of them they're all out in my shed i'll have to do another tutorial on that one um that one was uh decoupaged on though it wasn't done with the transfer method so i'm wondering if that's what you're thinking about uh i highly recommend buying that paint recipe booklet super handy to have in all these yeah this little booklet is fantastic um i wrote it all up and then between my daughter and i so my daughter and i work together on my channel here she's the computer savvy one so i give her my ideas and then she does her magic and makes it happen so i gave her my ideas for these i wrote down all of my chalk paint recipes and then she designed the booklet and this is so handy and I've made it so you can just flip. Now this is a downloadable printable version that you would get on Etsy. And then I've taken that and I've made it kind of fancy. I've added my little tabs and stuff. But if I'm working on baking powder paint, I can flip right to it. There's my baking powder paint recipe, everything I need to do. It is a really handy resource to have. Um, what do you think about folk art paint? Uh, I think is a folk art paint is a, Walmart brand, I think. Um, I use so much of the, uh, so much paint that I find for me, the most affordable way is to make my own. And I buy the white latex um, eggshell, which is the base of my chalk paint. I buy it in the gallon and then I just make small, um, rest, like small, small portions of my chalk paint as I need it. Uh, otherwise I would be spending a lot of money on that folk art paint. And I'm not sure if the folk art paint, it might be acrylic. I'm not sure, cause I don't use it. Uh, what weight do you consider cheap paper? Shoot, I don't have, um, I'll put the link down below in the description to the Amazon basic paper that I use and it will have the weight in there so we can, we can find out. But it's definitely 
um, it, definitely worth uh, grabbing some of that. That's terrific, not terrible. <laughs> Uh, I, yes, I have your book and it made it real pretty too with a C theme. Oh, that's cool, fun. Do you have to wait 24 hours before rubbing off? Yes, um, you have to wait 24 hours. I have done it sooner than 24 hours. I've been impatient and I've done it, I've even done it an hour afterwards. It can work sometimes, but you're gonna have the chance of this happening more if you don't wait that 24 hours. Uh, now this didn't happen because I didn't wait. This happened because there was a little bit of texture in the wood and it rubbed off. But I find if you don't wait that 24 hours, then um, then you have more chance of your graphic rubbing off and not doing a good transfer. So if you're not in a big hurry, just set it aside and let it sit before you do this. It's a cheap, it, yes, it's very cheap copy printer paper. This is really cheap. It's the cheapest that you can find. Um, it would be like the cheapest computer paper that you could find at Walmart. I buy mine on Amazon. Um, as soon as you buy a paper that's a bit thicker, you're gonna rub, run into to issues because it's gonna be more paper to rub off. So here's another example. This was just a hunk of, I think this was in the burn pile actually, this piece of wood. I've added a hanger on the back poultry and eggs and I sealed it up. This one I really distressed. I think if I'm remembering this one, I might've put some Vaseline around the edges and that gives a really nice distressed look and then added my poultry and eggs graphic on this one. I like that one. Um, here is, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry, talking too much and then I lose my voice. <clears throat> um, antique sign. Okay, lots of things going on here. This one's fun. This was painted with the black chalk paint. And then I added this rust color chalk paint. And then I added Elmer school glue. And then I did my crackle paint technique and added the uh, white chalk paint on top of the Elmer's glue while it was still wet. And that's going to give you this crackle paint underneath. It works really, really cool. Um, I do have a full tutorial on how to do that crackle technique with the Elmer's glue. If you haven't seen that, that's a really fun one to try underneath your signs. And then I did my Mod Podge reverse transfer method on top of this. Now this is a bigger sign. And as you can tell, this is bigger than a sheet of paper. So um, you can put your graphic into Google Docs and then you can size it on two sheets of paper and make a bigger graphic. Again, don't worry, I have a full tutorial step by step on how to make larger graphics. I'll put, uh, it'll probably take me about a half an hour after I'm finished this to get all those links down below there. But that will show you how to make late, uh, larger signs. And uh, I did this larger sign on top of the crackle paint. Now, word of caution, if you're going to do a sign like this on top of crackle paint, Elmer's glue um, is water soluble. So when you are putting water on your graphic to rub it off. You wanna make sure that you're not putting on too much water because it's gonna reactivate that glue and it's going to rub it off. So this is a little bit more of a tiki, uh, tricky um, technique, but once you master the beginner steps and uh, you know the beginner little signs, you can start introducing some different painting techniques underneath and try this technique and it gets really fun. And then of course, now when you can get to the point of doing these different painting techniques under, underneath, that takes your signs to another whole level because where is anybody ever gonna find another sign exactly like this? And they're not. So it's going to be a better seller because um, it's just not, it's an original and it's just not something that everybody is, is going to find. It's gonna be unique 
and it's going to stand out when you have it set up at your craft sales. Um, where are we at here? Could you do uh, an amazing link for your picture hangers too? Um, oh, the uh, these right here, the sawtooth hangers, I can definitely do that. Finally caught alive, love your videos. Thanks, Linda. Um, please explain the Vaseline method of distressing. Let me see. Okay, let's go back to this one. So the Vaseline method. Again, there's a full tutorial on, I think I have a, a video on four different painting techniques to create rustic looking wood that was brand new. And one of the techniques is using Vaseline. So this was just a piece of raw wood and you take some Vaseline just on your fingers, put it around the edges. You don't wanna to go too far in, but just around the edges. And then I took my black paint, painted completely over the whole sign, on top of that Vaseline, on top of everything. Let the black paint dry. And then I painted the white on top of the black. And you can even add a little bit more Vaseline on top of that dry black paint and then put the white over top. Let it completely dry. And then when it's all dry, you can take a cloth and you can wipe all around the edges and anywhere that there was Vaseline, it's going to rub off down to that, that color of wood of where you put that original Vaseline. And it's going to create this really um, chippy and distressed looking piece of wood. It's so simple to do and it works fantastic. And again, you're taking a boring piece of wood and you're making it look old and vintage and chippy and, and unique. And uh, I need to, this one would be really good if I made another sign to go on top of it that said fresh eggs or farm fresh eggs or something. I need to make this into a two part sign. That would be a good one. Um, yeah, so that's the distressing, uh, the distressing method with Vaseline. And let's do, I've got a couple more of these. We'll do a couple more before we uh, pop off here. So if you've got any last minute questions, then ask away. Now, of course, if you can't do this technique or you're having issues with it, um, this isn't your only resort. You can always just decoupage. Um, I don't know if I have, I don't have anything in here right now. I should have brought more examples in. Um, you can just decoupage. You can custom make your own napkins and decoupage onto projects. and You don't have to rub anything off. Uh, you can just do your custom napkins or you can just print something on a piece of paper and then you can coffee stain it and decoupage it. I do that a lot with my tin cans or my glass jars. I'll just print off something and treat it like a label and distress it that way. So this is just one technique of many that you can you can use but I just like this because people don't know how it's done. So it, they're intrigued with it and they're not picking up a piece of sign and going, oh, she just stuck a piece of paper on here. I can do that, which is a big thing at craft sales. People will come around and they'll say, well, I can make that. Where they look at these and they can't figure out how they were made. So it just makes them a little bit more original and uh, just makes it a little bit easier to sell. But it's not your only option, of course. Lots of different ways that you can do uh, graphics like this. So, yeah. And dream big. Let's finish off with the dream big. So I'm going to add just a little bit more water. Oh, I don't think I showed you this one. Did I show you guys this one? This was one that's done on a piece of palette wood also with the colored acrylic paint and the graphic. This one just needs to be sealed up and I need to put a little uh, sawtooth on the bottom. But yeah, that's another nice one. So let's finish up this one. And again, after I finish the live, if you still have questions or you're catching the live after, no worries. You can find me over on Facebook or Instagram, or you can head to the comments here. And I'm, I try really hard. I have so, so many comments that I have to get through. I try really hard to answer everybody. Might not get to you right away, um, but you can ask questions down there and I can help you out. Um, can you give me an idea for what your antique sign would sell for? Well, everything is going to be priced different in different areas. Uh, and like I said before, I've got my formula 
um, that I use out of my booklet. It's really gonna determine how much you paid for your wood, uh, for how much you're gonna price your sign out um, for. So that's where this little resource booklet is great because then it can be, okay, my, my wood cost, free. Chalk paint, you know, you can go down and you can say, okay, well, I've got, so this wooden sign that I, I did came out to $4.81. So I know it cost me $4.81, not for this sign, but for a sign that I was doing for the booklet. And, and then you can go from there and figure out the formula. Something like this in my area, I would probably price it anywhere between $20 and $25. That probably would be in the range of what I would be able to get for a sign like this. So, but like I said, everybody's area is going to be different. So just take that with a grain of salt, but that's probably here what I would get for that. So help that. I hope that helps. Um, what about decoupaging a napkin, putting sealer over it, and then decoupaging a text graphic over it? Is that a thing? It certainly is a thing. You could just experiment. Um, that's a thing with all of these. You could do a graphic transfer with the words and then take a, actually what you could do, you could decoupage uh, a napkin and then seal, and I don't know if that would work because then you'd have to put your water on it. It's just one of those things that you just kind of have to play around with. Um, you can print on a napkin and then decoupage and then stamp on it. Uh, not sure about doing a decoupage napkin and then doing a reverse transfer because you're gonna have to introduce water to it and then it's going to reactivate the napkin. So that might not work, but trial and error. Just try it. Thanks so much for your encouragement and tutorials. I'm going to participate in our neighborhood craft show. Oh, well, good for you. Good luck. Um, have you tried this on glass without painting it first? Um, yes, it won't work will not absolutely not work and if somebody says it will then they're not telling you the truth because it will not work it will just rub right off um i do make my diy stickers with my label sheets and my laser printer and then you can stick them on your clear glass but as far as doing the transfer method um on clear glass without painting it no it won't work uh will the homemade chalk paint work for painting old furniture of course it will yep it will for sure and it's really affordable it goes a long way and it works great and the nice thing is you can just go a lot of times if i'm looking for a specific color you can go to home depot or lowe's and you can just buy the tester size paints and then turn that into chalk paint and then use it as your um use it on your furniture too that'll work great okay we covered a lot of uh a lot of stuff today so I hope I helped you guys out um, let me know down in the comments or send me a message if there's anything that you want me to do a live on that I can uh, guide you through and we can definitely do that so thanks for hanging out and um, just one second here I keep getting messages coming in that's great I love answering them so keep them going thanks for saving me the time of trying I've seen your stickers yeah don't don't even try to do the transfer on clear glass it's not going to work just use stickers have you used stay on stamps for transfers I haven't no I haven't used that I don't know what is that like an IOD stamp I'm not sure I haven't used those they are too expensive I'm so cheap I'm an upcycler and a, re, and a thrifter and a repurposer if I can do anything on the cheap or figure out how to do it cheaper I'm going to do it and I'm going to and I'm going to help you guys out and show you how I did it afterwards so you can save money too. So, okay, I got work to do. So I'm gonna sign off and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.